Hello everyone. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to we're going to discuss some stereochemical aspects of the E2 reaction. So this would uh, basically tell us more about the mechanism, like you know, what are some requirements for an E2 reaction to happen? That is what we're going to discuss here. Uh, so just to refresh your memories, remember for SN2 reactions, uh, the stereochemical requirement in the mechanism, stereochemical requirement, that means spatially, right? What's requirement, what's required spatially. So the stereochemical requirement in an SN2 reaction is the backside attack of the nucleophile. The nucleophile must come and attack the alpha carbon from the side or the end that's opposite to the leaving group that is required for SN2 reactions. And that explains the stereochemical outcome of an SN2 reaction that the stereochemistry at the alpha carbon is inverted in an SN2 reaction. So we're trying to look at similar things for E2 reactions. What is required for an E2 reaction? Okay. And again, to get started on this, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically mention what the stereochemical requirement is and then walk you through, you know, how that kind of uh, affects reaction outcome, you know, how does it uh, affect the, like which product is major or why is only one product formed, maybe things like that, okay? So the stereochemical outcome of an, or the stereochemical requirement, okay? The stereochemical requirement in an E2 mechanism is that the H beta, the beta hydrogen, whichever one we are focusing on, and the leaving group, which is basically the halogen the leaving group are uh, anti periplanar to each other okay now to simplify this anti periplanar just think of this as anti. They should be anti to each other. That is what this statement is saying. The beta hydrogen that is being deprotonated and the X, the halogen, okay, the leaving group, which is the halogen here. So maybe to make it specific, I would write halogen here, are anti to each other. That is a requirement of an E2 reaction. So an SN2 reaction, it requires a backside attack. In an E2 reaction, it requires an anti uh, relationship between the beta hydrogen and the halogen. So since we're talking about anti now, where did we talk about anti, which topic? Uh, again, you know, it's the truth about organic chemistry, you always keep going back. So anti, we are now talking about Newman projections. That means we need to go draw molecules in Newman projections to understand this stereochemical outcome and like other things that are going to happen here. So uh, to simplify this, to keep it simple, to start off simple, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this molecule. We've seen this a couple of times before. We've used it for other uh, examples. Uh, so we're going to look at this molecule and we're only going to focus on one set of carbons here, okay? Uh, we're going to uh, beta hydrogen, one set of beta hydrogen. So if that's my alpha carbon, okay, and okay, I think I'm going to draw it so that I have a little bit more space here. So this is bromine and this is <clears throat> uh, 
And let's say we're doing the reaction using sodium methoxide in methanol with heat. Okay, that's how we're doing the reaction. NaOME, ME stands for methyl, so CH3, sodium methoxide, methanol. So this is our alpha carbon. This is beta, and this is beta prime. And we, we've drawn all the products possible from this reaction before, so let me draw those out again. So I think we said there are three possible products from this reaction. We'll get an E-alkene or the trans-alkene alkene. We'll get a Z-alkene, and we're going to get the less substituted alkene. Both of these products, they come from H beta. Okay, this is when H beta is lost. The less substituted alkene is coming from H beta prime. So the stereochemical aspect of this reaction is limited to these two. That's where the stereochemistry is. Okay, there's no stereochemistry to that molecule. We cannot talk about ENZ or cis and trans because that's a monosubstituted alkene. These are disubstituted alkenes. So we have cis and trans or ENZ, whichever way you call it. So that's where the stereochemistry is. So what we are discussing here is how come we get both products? And then the other aspect here is how come this is major? That is a major product. Uh, do we, can we understand that? That is what we're trying to see here, okay? So, uh, so what we're going to do is for the rest of this uh, discussion here, we only need to focus on this beta hydrogen because that is what gives us these two products, the, tra uh, the cis and the trans products, okay? So let me draw this molecule again with a focus on this beta hydrogen. Okay, so this carbon here, the beta carbon, realize that it has two hydrogens on it. They're both H beta. And now to differentiate those, what we're going to do is we're going to call them H A and H B. Okay, so that we have some handle on them. Otherwise, we won't know which one we're talking about. And we're not discussing the other beta prime hydrogen because that does not give us any stereochemistry. Okay, so for this particular molecule, and it's probably helpful to include some stereochemistry here. So let's put this bromine on a wedge. That would make our life easier uh, because we need to start drawing Newman projections now. Okay, so the bromine is on a wedge. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a Newman projection for this molecule looking from here, okay? This is where the eye is. Okay, we're looking at the molecule uh, along this bond, uh, which is the alpha carbon beta carbon bond. That's the bond that we're looking at, okay? Looking at C alpha, C beta, carbon alpha, carbon beta bond. So if I do that, when I look at this, I think what I see is on the beta carbon, I see a methyl going down. H A is going to my right, H B is to my left. And I look at it from here, H A to my right, H B to my left. On the alpha carbon, which is the back carbon now, okay, beta carbon is the front carbon, alpha carbon is the back carbon. On the back carbon, I see a methyl pointing up. To my right is bromine. And then there is a hydrogen here. So that hydrogen is to the left. Okay, so this is the Newman projection for this molecule. Now, for this reaction to happen, what we need is the stereochemical requirement, okay? Things have to be oriented in a certain way. So for this reaction to happen, for the elimination to happen, or when this reaction is going on, uh, these groups have to be oriented in a certain way. And realize the important requirement is H beta and the leaving group, which is the halogen, they have to be anti 
periplanar to each other, which means they're basically anti to each other, okay? Uh, so in this particular case, the Newman projection that I've drawn here, what you can notice is HB and BR are anti to each other, okay? These are anti. These are anti to each other. And so what that means is we can do a elimination, we can do an elimination reaction here. So essentially our base, which is methoxide, this can come in and the base can go ahead and deprotonate H beta. Okay, now it cannot deprotonate HA because HA is not anti to this halogen. Uh, it is gauche to that halogen. Okay, so it can go ahead and deprotonate uh, HB and then this electron basically falls down and then the BR gets kicked out. That's how the reaction happens. What would be the outcome of this reaction? And that we can see from this, pro, uh, from this Newman projection. So if you look at the Newman, I think I should move it from here. Uh, the methoxide, okay, with the negative charge that's coming and getting that H beta. So what's the outcome of this? Uh, the reason I moved it is because that methoxy was right on top of that line. It almost seemed like the methoxy was connected to it. So what's the outcome of this reaction? We can see it in this Newman projection. So when we look at this Newman projection, my front carbon, okay, it's very important to track these. The front carbon, HA on front carbon, and methyl on the back carbon are on the same side. Similarly, H on the back carbon and methyl on the front carbon are on the same side. So that's the stereochemistry we're going to get. So essentially when we get the alkene, we have a double bond. And remember this was our beta carbon was the front carbon. The beta carbon was front carbon. So let's say this is beta, that's alpha. On the beta carbon, I have HA. Okay, let's say HA. HA on the beta carbon. On the alpha carbon, which is the back carbon, the methyl is on the same side. So I'm going to draw the methyl over there. And then the methyl on the beta carbon, which was the front carbon here, is here. And the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, the back carbon, is on the same side. So that means the hydrogen is here. So essentially what we got here is the trans product, okay? We got the trans product because this is the trans alkene, okay? And before, uh, actually, let me go ahead and erase this because I wanna keep all of that on the same board. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to take this Newman projection, so I'm going to redraw that. HP, methyl, bromine, and hydrogen. Okay. And I'm going to orient this molecule in such a way that HA, which is gauche with the bromine, that becomes anti to the bromine. Okay. So I'm going to do or rotation by negative 120 degrees. So I'm going counterclockwise in some sense, okay? So I do a rotation by negative 120 degrees on the front carbon. So what I'll get is
that H A is now here. And if H A comes here, H B should come down and the methyl should go up there. That's our confirmation now, the new Newman projection. Okay, and now HA and bromine, these are anti to each other. So that means our base, which is methoxide can come and grab HA because that's anti to bromine. It cannot grab HP because they are gauche now. And then those electrons fall into the space between alpha and beta and the bromine gets kicked out. And again, we can draw the product from this Newman projection. And this Newman projection basically tells us the stereochemical outcome. So if I look at this is the beta carbon and then we have the alpha carbon. So we got a double bond between beta and alpha. On the beta carbon, we have the methyl and the methyl on the alpha carbon are pointing in the same direction now. So that means these are both pointing in the same direction. And then HB on the beta carbon and the hydrogen on the alpha carbon on the circle, they're in the same direction. So that means we have HB and H here. So this is essentially our cis product. So that's how we get these two products the trans and the cis. They're, we obtain those by the loss of these two beta hydrogens, which are both on the same carbon atom, H beta. Okay, now the big question is, if that is the case, why is trans the major product and cis the minor product? Now there is a stability aspect to it. The trans alkene is more stable than the cis alkene, but is there more? in these conformations that you can identify if there is anything more. Notice how in this conformation here, which gives us the trans alkene, if you compare this conformation to the conformation that gives us the cis alkene, this is more stable. This is more stable because the two methyl groups are anti to each other. So it's a more stable conformation. Whereas here, the two methyl groups are gauche to each other. This is a gauche conformation. So it is staggered, but it is less stable than the stable anti conformation. And so because of that, what happens is we get more of the trans product and we get less of the cis product. There's a combined effect, you know, so this is like a transition state. This would be a transition state or what's going to happen in the, in the transition. There's some, uh, it, it gives you some hint about, this is not a transition state, sorry. This is not a transition state, but this gives you some hint about what your transition state is going to look like. So this is going to give you a more stable transition state. This is going to lead to a less stable transition state. And so if the transition state is more stable, then the activation energy is lower. And so you get more product. Activation energy is higher, you get less product. Sorry, these are not transition state, but they give you some picture about what the transition state is going to look like. Okay, so that is the, uh, so this is the stereoselectivity in E2 reaction. So I'm going to erase this, okay. So all of those Newman projections, they basically tell us why <coughs> we get one product as a more, uh, as a major product. So we call this stereo selectivity in E2 reaction. That means uh, one product is selected to be a major product, okay? 
So that's a very important aspect of E2 reactions, stereoselectivity in E2 reactions. There's something else. Uh, that's the next thing that we're going to look into. Okay. And, or maybe I'll break it up and make it like a separate video. So this one is all about stereoselectivity in E2 reactions. We saw the reasons why uh, we get the trans product as the major product and we get the cis product as the minor product. Uh, when you have two beta hydrogens on a carbon, like a beta carbon has two beta hydrogens, then how do we get the cis and the trans? Why is trans the major product? and cis the minor product, okay? So I'm going to break it up and then produce another video on stereospecificity in E2 reactions.